disclosure. But let's bring in our halftime headliner now, Dubravko Lakos, JP Morgan's head of global market strategy, joins us once again. It's good to see you, man. Welcome back. It's been a minute. Thank you. Good to see you as well. And uh, it's exciting to be back on air. It's great to have you at Post 9. Um, so as we head out of uh, 2024 and into a new year, I mean, how do you feel like the market's sitting right now? I think uh, big picture, we're sort of sitting at a bit of a crossroad. Um, I think the market had a lot to digest this year. We had the um, summer patch, um, the summer period that was sort of weak. And then ever since the end of the summer, uh, the, re the resiliency story uh, came back in. I think we sort of need to see what the next two or three job prints give us. Um, I think obviously we need to see what the election outcome looks like, what kind of policies we'll be basically dealing with in, in 2025 and beyond. Um, so I think we're at a bit of a crossroad, but you know, considering everything, the economy is holding up much better than what we expected. Yeah, I'm kind of surprised, I guess, to hear you say crossroads. It feels like we're on a pretty uh, smooth road, right, of economy good, earnings good, and yeah. Fed beginning this cutting cycle. Um, what I hear, you know, people throw out terms like animal spirits and M&A mm -hmm. projections for next year. That seems like a pretty good road, not necessarily crossroads. So something that I'll just throw out there is, um, first of all, I think the backdrop, you have to think about the backdrop in terms of a K-shaped backdrop, right? Uh, like the, the recovery that we've seen over the course of the last few years has not been an even recovery. It's been an uneven across countries, across companies, across consumers. Uh, rates coming down, obviously, is much wanted. Uh, a lot of expectations for Fed to ease. However, if you look at, uh, you know, how the rate market has been behaving the last several weeks, there's been a bit of a reversal. And so uh, a lot of expectation around soft landing. I think soft landing still remains largely a consensus view. And I would sort of say the pain trade here may be that we go back into no landing or some form of higher for longer. And in that case, I think you have to think about things in a more nuanced fashion. Even, even if a higher for longer is a reflection of economic strength, not necessarily a rekindling of inflation, albeit you do have p political policies that, um, you know, obviously are hot in the political, I mean, in the, uh, in the deficit debate mm. about longer term in interest rates. So how do you factor that in? So I think that um, just because we're, if we go into a higher for longer, that doesn't have to be bad, to your point, especially if the growth side of the equation remains okay. Uh, but I do think it has pretty big implications for how you think about portfolio positioning, how you think about sectors and so forth. So mm -hmm. again, uh, since April of this year, the big trade has been defensives, bond proxies. A lot of the folks on the flip side have also been on the cyclical side, uh, pricing and sort of soft landing. And to me, um, I'm not sure I would want to be in defensives and a higher for longer. I'm not even sure I would want to be in some of the higher beta, smaller cap, cyclical stocks. I would sort of be revisiting sort of the quality growth trade that has been, I don't want to say entirely dormant, but sort of dormant for much of the last four, five, six, sure. seven months. Oh, so, so you think um, with mega cap earnings looming next week, you think that could be a pivotal event then if you're suggesting you may want to lean into that area of the market yet again so their earnings better justify the reasoning behind that. Look, I think there's still a lot of pricing power in that segment. I think one needs to keep an open mind. We still need to get through the election, which is again around the corner. And depending on the outcome, is it a gridlock? Is it not a gridlock? Is, what's the chance of a red wave? You could see some rotation in the market. For instance, red wave, many associated with more domestic trade, more small cap trade. So, yeah, you have to be careful there that there could be these tactical moves that happen for a month or two. But I think bigger picture, as you think about the next six or 12 months, 2025, I think quality growth to me is something that I would sort of keep an open mind towards. Where's the, I agree with you, by the way, on that, and that's how I'm positioned. But where's the consumer play in? You mentioned it. We hear from some companies, consumers strong, right? Like Deckers and, and others. We hear from banks, you know, that their balance sheets are extended like they've never been, seeing delinquencies creep up a little bit, but not anything remarkable. Retail sales good, yeah. consumer sentiment beat. Yeah. So, right to your point. So where, so where does the consumer stand, or is it so bifurcated at this point it's difficult to to figure out. I think it goes back to this, what I mentioned, just K-shape or bifurcated right. that you mentioned, the word bifurcated. I think you look at the bottom one-third of the consumer versus the upper two-thirds, I think you see a pretty different picture. And where I'm sort of surprised is that bottom one-third has generally held up much better. Right. Um, and I think they are having inflation come down, having rate environment ease a bit, even though it's not really easing that much, right. I think it's helping on a margin. 
But uh, it's really the upper two thirds that I think continues to carry the weight of the uh, of the broader economy. So just economy. to put a point in that, do you believe that not that it's ever been terrible with the consumer, even the low end? Do you think we've bottomed out on the consumer's downside? I think we've bottomed out probably in the next, I would say, six months. Mm -hmm. uh, but I think the jury is still out a bit on that front. But again, if we go back into a higher interest rate environment. A few weeks ago, people right. were talking about three and a quarter in the ten-year. Now we're back, basically back at four and a quarter. If that becomes five and a quarter, I think the equation starts to change. Sure, but what are the chances of that actually happening, right? I mean, the probabilities of we're, we're talking rates backing up to five and a quarter. If rates were to stay here or in this general vicinity, would that make you more incrementally yes. more bullish yes. on, on the market? We, I think we, if, if, if rates sort of stay in this vicinity, I think you have a slightly more even, if you will, uh, you know, business cycle continuation. But I don't know. You tell me what's what's going to be the election outcome. What's the chance of a red wave? Well, that's why it's how does the rate it, market behave? It's impossible to yeah. predict the next yeah. 10 days to two weeks. Who knows what the immediate aftermath of the election is going to be either in terms of when it's actually decided if we're thinking about cycles past uh, in at least our most recent history. Who knows if it's going to be that night or not. But once you get past that, yeah. that's why I say you clear all that out and you still have the facts of a good economy, a hanging in consumer and the Fed cutting uh, interest rates and companies dying to do stuff. Private equity sitting on dry powder, private equity trying to have realizations for the first time in what's been a really slow market. All of those things are uh, stimulative to a marketplace that's good, moving higher. No, no, I, 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 I agree there. And uh, it's not just investors, but it's corporates that have been sitting on the sideline. Yeah. Many are basically waiting to sort of get through this patch of upcoming uncertainty around the election. And yeah, to your point, you definitely could see some broadening in CapEx. I do think you mentioned capital markets. And again, my focus tends to be more public side, but I do get exposure to folks in the private side. There's definitely pent up demand. And so far, when you look at activity, there has been very sporadic one off. You could see a broadening there. And so, uh, one Q, I think, could be uh, you could have a pretty decent setup. Let's just get through sort of the November period. Yeah. yeah. Well, I hear you on that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think everybody is feeling that. And Mark, you've seen the market this week, obviously, try and place its bets yeah. uh, a little bit. It's been great having you back. Thanks for being here once again. Thanks for having me. To Rob Kolekos, JP Morgan, head of global market strategy right here at Post 9.